In the 13 years following the Norman conquest of Palermo, Count Roger maintained pressure on the last remaining Arab holdouts in Sicily, while his brother, Duke Robert, was occupied with affairs on mainland Italy. Roger lacked the men to launch any large-scale invasions of Muslim territory. During this period, there were few pitched battles, but many raids and counter-raids, in which small, swift bands of horsemen executed quick attacks against borderland towns and fortresses. Throughout these grueling struggles, both sides demonstrated remarkable bravery. But gradually, the Arabs were losing ground, while Norman power was increasing. In 1077, Count Roger subdued the last remaining Muslim strongholds in western Sicily. The Normans besieged Trapani. Roger's son Jordan led a surprise raid on the grassy promontory where the defenders kept their sheep and cattle and thus, with a single stroke, deprived the town of its main food source. Trapani's garrison surrendered, marking a significant loss for Sicily's Muslims. Next, the well-positioned castle of Erice capitulated. Two years later, in 1079, the Emir of Tormina, whose city was by now encircled by almost two dozen Norman fortresses, found himself also facing a strong naval blockade. He realized that further resistance was futile and surrendered to the Christians. Tormina's fall was followed by the capitulation of the remaining strongholds in the Etna region. At the close of 1079, the entirety of Sicily, north of the agrigento catania line, with the exception of the powerful fortress of Enna, was now in Norman hands. Next, Count Roger's advance was briefly halted. The Normans had to deal with a few minor Saracen uprisings in 1080. And in 1081, Roger was called on to assist his brother Robert in Italy. Robert Giscard was about to launch his massive expedition against the Byzantine Empire. And during his absence, he wanted his brother to rule as regent in Apulia. Although Roger must have found it frustrating to be called away from his domains in Sicily, as usual, he was happy to help his brother, for he well understood that his own position in Sicily was reliant upon the security and prosperity of Robert's state in southern Italy. During his first few weeks in Italy, Roger was alarmed to receive news that back in Sicily, Ibn Alwardi, the Emir of Syracuse, called Bernavert, by the Norman chronicler Geoffrey of Molitera had managed to capture Catania. However, Roger's son, Jordan, assembled 160 horsemen, struck back against Ibn al-Wardi, and recaptured Catania. By the time Roger returned to Sicily, all was in order, but he intended to take action to prevent the possibility of further revolts. Over the winter, Roger dedicated his time to bolstering the defenses of Messina, which he considered to be the key stronghold of Sicily. But in the spring of 1082, Roger was once again summoned by his brother Robert to help deal with pressing matters in Italy. It was during this period of Roger's absence in the summer of 1083 that the Count's own son, Jordan, gathered around himself a band of discontented knights and raised the standard of rebellion against his own father. Jordan seized a couple of castles, then advanced on Troina, where his father kept his treasure. Roger hurried back to Sicily to find that the revolt showed little potential for success, but rather, the real danger was that Jordan and his companions might desert to the Muslims. Initially, Roger feigned mercy, acting as though he were totally untroubled by the whole affair. 
This posturing worked, and Jordan and his co-conspirators gave themselves up to Roger, believing they would be pardoned. The Count immediately threw them all into prison. Jordan's twelve main accomplices were blinded, while Jordan himself languished in prison for days, waiting to receive a similar punishment. At last, Roger issued a pardon for his son. Jordan knelt at his father's feet and swore his loyalty. And indeed, he served Roger faithfully for the remainder of his life. This was the last time the great count would ever again be troubled by internal disloyalty in Sicily. Meanwhile, Ibn al-Wardi, the emir of Syracuse, had been biding his time, waiting for the chance to strike back against the Normans. During the summer of 1084, he made his move, launching a series of naval raids against the towns of the Calabrian coast. At Reggio, the Saracens destroyed two churches, but worst of all, Ibn al-Wardi's men attacked the convent of the Mother of God at Rocca de Asino. Here, they captured all of the nuns and carried them back to the emir's harem. If Ibn al-Wardi was trying to rouse a thirst for vengeance among the Christians, he certainly succeeded. In fact, the emir was more interested in rousing the ardor of his own Muslim subjects, for he knew that only a fiery spirit of resistance would give him any chance of defying the Normans. News of the treatment of the nuns spread rapidly, and soon Roger's followers were clamoring for a decisive counterattack against the Saracens. Immediately, Roger began to prepare for what would prove to be one of the biggest military campaigns of his life. Next time, we'll learn about the Norman siege of Syracuse.